Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of my series, How to Create AI Images with Disco Diffusion 5.2. And this is part two of the series, and this is going to focus on image quality. The first thing I'm going to change and talk about is the steps in the settings, and I believe it is set by default to 250. So I have turned my down here. I've also turned down my um, resolution size here a little bit just to render this. So the steps though is a very important part of how your final image is going to turn out. If you have it set too high, it can get kind of crunchy. If you have it set too low, it will give you not very much detail. So I'm gonna kind of start here. And I'm also gonna turn this down a bit. This one I'll probably get into a little bit more with the next one. But for now, I'm just gonna run this at 140 steps. And then I'm going to show you the prompt that I'm using, which is just a pretty basic one. It's just a castle in a fantasy landscape. And then I'm just going to run it here with the 140 steps and time lapse it. And then I'll come back and we'll show you what we got with the 140 steps. Now here we have the final run here at 140 steps. You can see it is pretty basic looking. So what we're going to do now is go and change the steps up to 200 and run it again. Okay, and this is our render here with 200 steps, and you see it does have a little more detail, looks a little better. Now we're going to try it one last time at 250 steps. Okay, and now you can see this is the final run here with 250 steps, and you can see it does look quite a bit better than the one with 140 steps. Okay, now so for the rest of the tutorial, though, I'm just, I'm just going to turn it down to 220, and we're just going to kind of leave the steps alone for now. Now, the other thing also you want to do when you're setting up your resolution, your pixels, is you want to set it up also for the kind of image you're making. Since I'm doing a landscape image, I'm going to have it a little wider than it is tall. And if you want to make, you know, a, a picture of somebody like a person's face, you'll want to, you know, adjust it so it's a little, you know, like portrait size, things like that. But let's go ahead and run this now at 1024 by 768. So I'm going to do this run now at 220 steps and 1024 by 768 resolution. Okay, and here's our image rendered at 1024 by 768. So you know, of course, anytime you increase the resolution, it's gonna be better. So I'm gonna get now into, I'm just gonna leave that for the rest of the tutorial and you can adjust that as you like. Now I'm gonna get into one other thing here. This is the cut and batches. Now this, again, there I have seen some studies on this. It, it's something you can, you can adjust, but keep in mind, if you do turn this up, it will greatly increase your render time. It'll actually almost double it for each frame. So I'm going to turn this up to four just to show you what it does. And it may or might, might not do a lot. Sometimes it'll add more details and things like that and look better. So it is something you can experiment with. And there's one other thing I'm going to show you after this. But for now, we're just going to change the two to four and run it like this. Okay, I'm going to go do the run again here. Okay, and here's our image now, and you can see it does add some more detail when you do turn that setting up, but I'm going to show you another way you can kind of get the same effect. And also we are getting some anomalies again, like we got mounds here, so I'm going to show you something else you can do that's not going to affect the render time or memory, and we'll get into this a little more in the next one. This is the clip guidance scale. Now this, I do not believe this affects memory at all, but this tells Disco Diffusion how hard to push the image towards your text prompt. So, and also, if I didn't mention it, there is a, a link to an article, a guide I've enclosed to um, Zippy's Disco Diffusion Guide. I really recommend that. That also explains in a little more detail the cut and batches. But for now, I'm just going to crank this up to 80,000, and I'm going to cut this back to 2. Again, this does increase the render time. So I'm going to cut this down to 2. Now, there is another setting down here in this part, extra settings. This is also where you can adjust, make it save periodically things like that but the only setting i ever mess with in here aside from this sometimes i'll change my saves and this we won't get into this but um this one right here this will actually also give you more detail on the inner cuts and you can turn this up to i like to turn it up to 20. so i'm going to do that and i'm going to turn this back down to two and it added it about added about a half a second to our render time by turning it up to four so this can increase your render time I, so i'd recommend leaving that at two but turn it up to four to do some times just to see what it does to your image so i'm going to go ahead and run this and then i'm going to run this and again so what we did is we turned our cut batches down to two we turned up the clip guidance scale which does not affect memory or anything 
at least not as far as I know it may if it does it's minimal and then I turn this up to 20 and then we're gonna do the run again okay our render is now done if you see I think this one does look at least as good as the last one if not even a little better and if we go back up here I want to show you what I changed again I cut this down from 4 to 2 which saved us a lot of render time and then I turned this up this cut I see pal so this is something you can experiment with this doesn't affect render time a whole lot um, the, and that's basically it. There's the next most important thing though is models. I don't like this one. For some reason, I just don't like the results with this. And I so here's my default. I always uncheck this one. I'd never use this one either. So I never use this one, the 16, the VIT B16, or the RN101. I'm actually gonna go ahead and run one here at this. Okay, and here are, is our new render with the new model setup. And you can see it does look significantly different. So this is my default. Usually I do something like this. I have both of these checked and both of these checked. This can cause your notebook to crash if you have too many of them. And I've never been able to get this one to run. I might try it again sometime. And I'm pretty happy right here with this. Okay, and the models are ready to go. So now I'm gonna do another render. Okay, and here is our image now from those other models. And I think this is about the best looking one yet. Now I also want you to notice now, I know this tutorial, you know, it's gone a little longer than I wanted, and this is a lot of kind of mundane stuff, but this is really going to give you all the tools you need to make just fantastic images. Because if you notice, we haven't even changed the text prompt. This is a really si simple prompt. Okay, and like I said, the next lesson is when the fun's going to start. I'm going to show you the prompt I used to make this right here in this same notebook. So make sure and hit that like and subscribe. See you next time.